you lovely lot. Welcome back again to another fun-filled 20 minutes. Um, I'm thinking actually because I'm filming up until the end of July um, just for a little wee summer break. So I know you always often go and do different things and uh, come back in September refreshed and renewed. I might do kind of like a favourites video um, or do you just like the looks? Do you just like the looks? I kind of wonder whether it's just like too looky or whether you just like a bit of an infomercial on different products, why that ended up with a kind of an American lilt at the end, I don't know. Anyway, um, yes, I am going to have my last sip of tea, um, which I should put a bit of sugar in. It's the afternoon here and I haven't got any biscuits. And I do love a cheap biscuit. I love a custard cream, a chocolate bourbon. I don't really do posh biscuits, apart from the ones that you used to in the UK anyway, get at the hairdressers. The posh, like, um, I forget the name of them now, obviously, because I have a half a brain. Um, the little coffee biscuits, coffee flavoured biscuits, they're sort of quite thin and they're kind of red and um, plastic. Um, oh, for goodness sake, packaging, you know, but that's a bit wasteful, isn't it? And they felt so decadent. In fact, me and my friend Zoe, who works on the channel with me, used to work in a hairdresser in Guildford many, many decades ago. I was going to say moons, but it's definitely decades. And we used to steal the biscuits. And we love those biscuits. We probably had about 15 biscuits. I was going to say every day, every hour. They were delicious. Anyway, so I've got no cheap biscuits, so I thought I'd chuck a bit of sugar in my tea. Always good to start on a ramble, isn't it? I, could, I should have a rambling channel because definitely, if I haven't got a purpose, I've definitely got a ramble to share. Anyway, my last swig of tea. The sugar is a bit of a pick me up. Although, if you follow the glucose goddess, I love the glucose goddess. She is wonderful. Actually, she's a client of mine. Um, follow her on Instagram. She's absolutely wonderful. Jessie, like the coolest biochemist you'll ever come across. Um, she's got this kind of like cute um, 70s haircut, super stylish, but oh my gosh, she knows her stuff. And the book, she's got two books out now. Um, I'll, I'm literally going off on a tangent, but it's definitely worth a listen. A friend of mine from the States actually came over, my husband's friend, and he read the book in sort of four hours and he relayed the whole story to me. So I actually haven't read it, Jessie, sorry, but my friend relayed it to me and it's fascinating about her background and how she got into it. It's not one of those books where you think, right, now I've got to learn about this and sit down and kind of take it in. You can just read it and enjoy it as a story. It's fascinating how the glucose levels are affected by what you eat in what order. Just throwing it in there as a bit of a top tip. Right, um, I was in a quandary about what to do today. I did sort of hesitate over the last two days. So this is why I'm filming in the afternoon, not in the morning. But I've decided to keep things simple on what I like and brands that have been loved to me, one lovely to me, one particular brand is Gen C. I'm gonna do a sort of a migration of, of looks with a few of their favorite products. Oh, and by the way, the reason why I thought about using Gen C is because um, one, they've been lovely, and two, they wanted to be part of this film. Thank you very much. And three, it's because our favourite, it's in the bag. <laughs> no, it's not. That's the lipstick I'm using. I kept that saved from last week. Our favourite reef is back in stock. Here it is. So this is the beautiful, beautiful cream eyeshadow that I've used as a blush, and I think I sort of dappled it onto my lips as well. Um, that was out of stock when I did the film. Um, I can put a link to that film um, down in the description box just to make it easier for you to navigate. And it was out of stock and it's such a lovely brand um, um, founded by two wonderful ladies. Um, and another reason why I love this brand is actually both of these ladies um, grew up in Israel. Um, they're both Jewish, but they both live in America now, I think. Those details, I mean, we all live everywhere. But another reason why I love this brand is um, because it's very heat resistant. And that was one of the things when they were testing the products, um, that it had to be really heat resistant, you know, more than 80 degrees, because obviously it's so humid um, in Tel Aviv, where they grew up or where they have family or where they go a lot. I'm not sure of the actual details, but that's why I've gravitated this brand because it really lasts. And if you're using cream textures, that's what you want. Anyway, um, they've got a new product called Comfort Lip, Lip Mask. And if you saw me, um, giving my thumbs up and my five stars on Instagram the other day, um, you'll know that I have been really, really enjoying this. Avocado oil, hemp oil, hyaluronic. It is absolutely lovely. It doesn't tingle. Um, it doesn't sensitize the lips. It doesn't kind of create that sort of barrier 
of hydration. Such a cute colour as well. I mean, actually, as I look at myself in the mirror, it looks quite cute, but not necessarily on the pill. You obviously wouldn't go out with it. Very kind of 80s ski look. Um, but I've been using this after I've cleaned my teeth. Um, gone about my, you know, homely duties. And before I've gone to bed, and as you know, I'm on a constant battle to retain that hydration in my lips so they have a bit of a fuller appearance. And they have been so soft and um, so smooth that um, I wanted to share it on Instagram. And I thought, no, I've got to do it for this film. So I might just keep that on for 10 minutes. And then I simply just tissue it off because it just gives it a little bit of hydration. But I wouldn't recommend that you go in for a sugary tea after you've applied this. I've got a little bit of base on. And I used, I'll tell you what, this has probably got to be one of my favourite bases, Merit. Um, just because of the packaging. I've just loved it going, broop, broop, already done it. Just to delete and erase my tired eyes. So that's all I've got. And I wanted to use the rest to show you some of the products, but also just how to morph different looks together. So I've got a favourite um, pick-me-up lipstick in kind of like an orangey red, which you know. I've got the metallic eyeshadows. I've got the, the very simple eyeshadows. But let's start with Reef first. Um, I'm going to use my new Ilia eyebrow pencil first. Then see our uh, colour brands. They've got lipsticks, um, eyeshadows. Um, I've got a brow product. They haven't got a coal product yet. It was a brand that was formulated and um, put together just, I think it was pre-lockdown they started. So it's a Bailey brand, very, very new, but it's such a great brand. All the products are vegan. It's sustainable. They really have the heart of the planet in terms of their packaging um, and their sustainability in the love of the brand as much as the colour cosmetics, which is so, so important. And honestly, it is so hard for these small brands to really deliver products of this standard. It costs a lot. Um, they also do great recycling um, with, I think this company that they work with is called Pact. I think that's right. Um, there's a few companies that people use. It's basically, if you go on the website, you can actually sign up to the, um, recycler that they work with and then recycle your products if you can't do it yourself or you're unsure how to do them. It's such a great idea. There's a few of them. Um, so I've just chucked a little bit of colour on my eyebrow tails, but I want to show you their eyebrow product. Again, their eyebrow gel, should I say. Um, again, look at all the colours. They're really, really fun, different colours for makeup. Uh, it feels very kind of like next generation. Um, but this is a little brow, twisty comb, but I love this shade. I'll find out the shade and I'll put the shade down below. But if you are someone who wants to add a little bit of volume, depth and longevity to the um, thickness of your brows and the lift of your brows, this is such a great color because it's slightly cool. It's great for a blonde. You don't really want to match your hair colour, obviously you want to match your brow colour. Some people like to go a little bit lighter. Sometimes if I'm on a job, I'll use this if the artist's brows are a little bit too heavy and sort of slightly dominating the eye. It's quite nice to go two or three shades lighter just to lift that. But also great if you've got grey hair. If you've got grey hair coming through in your brows and you don't want to tint them, you can just use a product very similar to this just to kind of add a little bit of tint. And I like to go backwards and forwards, not too sticky uppy. Um, just to give it a little bit of shape and a little bit of depth. I've already got a bit of mascara on for this morning, but I knew you wouldn't mind. So you could have like the most simplest kind of start to your makeup like that, but you just want a little bit of warmth. And that's why I think Reef is such an easy wearable color. It's sort of like a warm, burnt, it's like a nudie apricot. It's very, very in between a sort of peachy, nudie, pinky brown. Okay, it's a very lovely shade, um, as you've seen before and why you loved it all. And as I said before, it just works so well. Um, it also works beautifully on darker skins. It's not just for a skin that is my shade, because on a darker skin, it also adds a real lift. 
but I've put that on very, very lightly. Now I've put it on, you'll probably remember the tutorial that I used it on, right? And I'm going to take it right up into the socket. But you can see how dense it is. You've got a little bit of playtime, not too much, but a little bit of playtime. But I just love the freshness of this product. And this colour, to me, feels modern, you know? It looks modern. It's just such a lovely, soft, nudie apricot. There we are, I forgot there in the end. Nudie apricot. Probably said that in the first line, but I can't remember. It's lovely how colour does that to you, isn't it? You just kind of see it changing in the light um, and how it changes when it goes onto your skin. So you can see, but actually I'm having to now, or you can't see, but I'm actually pressing quite firmly to buff that in. To buff that in because it really does last. And I find often my bugbear with cream eyeshadows or creamy products is that on an eye that's not super tight and on an eye that's slightly hooded, when you get the creasing, I don't mind the creasing too much, as long as it's getting a little bit, because it's a natural movement in the eye. I mean, you can't, makeup can't be kind of sort of airbrushed, you know? It's got to have that flexibility and that movement, and we need to sort of relax about it, but you don't want it to be too, too um, separated when you open and close your eyes. That's where the product isn't very well formulated. Um, but this blends really well and it doesn't tighten on my eyes and it doesn't make me feel that my sort of, as I'm opening and closing my eyes, have you ever had this before where it sticks together and I just feel like my eyes are going like that? <laughs> I'm not trying to release it. It's just very flexible. And as you can see, just so pretty, you know? It's just one of those shades that's got it so well. Hence why it was out of stock for such a long time. And the girls are like, it's back in stock. Right, okay, so like, right, we'll have to do something else. Let's just do, keeping it really simple. Maybe we could do the whole makeup with this first. Could also work on the lips as well, so my lips won't be as, yeah, maybe. I don't know where this, I have no idea what I'm gonna create for you, actually. I was trying to be really specific and thinking, oh God, what do they want? I feel like, I feel like I've done everything. I'll probably have to finish off with like a real kind of like lovely bronzy, summer you know evening makeup i feel like we all need to kind of get the best products for those kind of sultry god it's so good isn't it it's so good uh sorry i finished my didn't get my train of thought i was wondering actually i was thinking if i gone too cheeky i might extend it up for those lovely balmy um summer evenings when the breeze is so warm on your skin and you feel all sun-kissed um, and you just want to look just a little bit more sultry and lovely. I'll try and nail that look at the end. It'd be lovely to do it in situ. Live and direct for some beautiful place in Greece, which I've not booked yet. <laughs> a bit slow on our holidays. We have booked a surfing holiday with myself and another um, family, not with my big boys, just with my littlest. Big boys are doing big boy things. It's really sad. Um, anyway, if I could hijack them, hijack them and kidnap them and bring them with me in my suitcase, I would. But um, I'm still trying. I'm still trying to few, drop, drop a few little hints in. See, I could actually go more and more with this. Like if I was creating a tutorial, I'd probably sort of bring it around the outside of the face here. But as you can see, it is just really very flattering. And as I said, it lasts. Such a nice colour. Should we try it on the lips? Let's see how that goes. So I'm going to take a tissue. Mm. Happy lips. And so nice. Like if you travel a lot for work and you're on aeroplanes and then you go into an air-conditioned um, hotel room and then you go to an air conditioned office. It's things like your lips and just like the fine lines around your eyes that really get affected by that. This is a really good tip. I haven't used it around my eyes, um, but I wouldn't put this around my eyes actually at night either because you'll probably find it's quite densely hydrated that it might make your eyes swell. So you wake up in the morning and like been crying all night. So that, you know, you don't want that, do you? Mm. And they feel so soft and malleable, you know? Mm. Very nice. Right, should we try reef on lips? I haven't done this before. It might wash me out, but seeing as we're having a bit of a reef love, let's go for that. And also, it might not work because of what I'm wearing. I mean, it doesn't not work. 
it's a nice look and it would probably be a nice look if I was being shot for a magazine or something but for my everyday I feel I feel a bit like sort of plasticy it's too beigey for me and that's no disrespect to the colour because this actually colour would look really nice if I kind of added a bit of gloss to it let's put the gloss on um, and I kind of darkened my eyes but together as a combination no mmm their gloss it's got lots and lots of hyaluronic in um, and it's very very balmy you've got to have a clear gloss in your makeup bag haven't you um, it's nice for the eyes a little bit on the cheeks it just kind of adds a little bit of glam for instance exactly this look that I've done something that's very very neutral mmm it needs a little bit of sheeny shine just to catch the light just to add a little bit more drama that's perfect and now now that's come alive much much more okay well so there we go let's darken up the eyes now the other two shades that I love there's a really lovely molten one mixed molten one here um, and that shade is called bronze age but there's also a lovely matte called plum plush plush so again really nice and shimmery and really lovely and kind of sultry so what should we do the other favorite one of my ah oh, this is my, my other favorite called first light mm -mm. okay why don't we do okay i'm gonna do a mixture of plush and first light let's change this up a lot or should we just go a bit of a lip first let's take the lip off we can always take that off can't we or should we do that? I quite like this glossy lip though. Let's go dark on the eyes. Or oh, orangey red on the lips. Oh, for goodness sake, Caroline. Right, okay, let's go first light. Let's see how first light layers over reef first, just over here. Because this is really gonna change it and actually we might be able to get away with that. So almost like what I did with my lips. So I put the kind of matte, nude apricot matte on my lip and then put the gloss over it using the kind of um, metallic shade over the top, adds that little bit of drama, and this is really nice, this colour, just here. Just on that tear duct, and it's got a really nice doe foot actually, which is flat enough to kind of pick up that shape, and it doesn't break, it doesn't break up into little pigment pieces of glitter, which is one of my bugbears, especially sort of in blush. How nice is that? Sold, right? Um, let's put that there. Really nice. Such a nice colour. Yeah, I think I'll keep the other colours. I'm not going to go dark. I'm going to keep this light. I'm going to keep those other two colours over there. And I really like that combination. Be interesting to see how that stays as well, sitting on reef. But I think because I've given reef enough time to dry, that's not going to separate. I have these in my pro kit because they're so good um, at work. Because I know that I can sort of trust them and I know they're going to last and they stay in place. But having that shot of light there is just really, really good. I might add a little bit more mascara, I think. Um, because if you're feeling tired, that really, you know, paint on that lovely bit of concealer um, and then add that little bit of light just in the tear duct there where you're dark honestly really brings such a brightness to your face it's definitely the best the best tip you can get apart from throwing your face in a massive bowl of ice water um, so there we go very nice I'm going to just blend out so that it doesn't I'm just going to push it very lightly but no it's staying put nice now as i see this as an entirety together and i don't know whether you all agree i don't like the gloss with this look mm, i have to get rid of it straight away because it's making me go Bleh. instantly better because the gloss and the metallic for me was just overkill i'm just going to soften that very slightly so that doesn't kind of sit in the lines around my eyes it kind of just adds that sort of brightness 
going to add a little bit more mascara, but I'll probably go in with the, um, the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. This is a really good mascara using the flat base if you want to just re-lift the lashes because often when you put on your second coat of mascara, you've probably done this, you end up with almost like three lashes because it just sticks together and you can't separate it. Whereas with this, you can push the mascara, as I've taught you so many times, just to the base of the mascara to lift up and then you comb through so you don't get that um, deposit of new mascara straight away. So let's put that there. That's better. And I might need some underneath, but maybe not. Maybe we'll go in for the red lip and then that will change it up. Just pressing that. There's my son, he's going off to football training. Hi. Um, yeah, that's enough for that. And if I'm gonna go in for the red lip, the pick me up lip, I might not use the mascara underneath, but let's see. And I think it's really nice to kind of maybe show you how makeup does evolve. And I know some of you have gone, oh blimey, what's she doing now? And then it's kind of, you know, made itself its own. And that kind of gives you confidence when you're putting your makeup on just to go, okay, well, let's just finish the look. Or maybe let's just put my jewelry on. Or I'll just match that with some earrings. Or maybe I'll pull back and look in a full length mirror rather than looking in my little compact to having to do my makeup because then you don't see the full effect, do you? Well, let's go in with this shade. I mean, I'm a creature of habit, aren't I? At this time of year, it's all about an orangey red. So again, it's thumbs up to the consistency because it's not too slippery. I can use the, the lipstick to create that nice lip shape for me. Um, I don't have to worry about a lip brush because it's sort of slightly, I don't want to say thick because that makes the lipstick um, not as luxurious as you think it might be, um, which it is, it's a great, great color, great consistency, and it's not gonna budge, but it still has that hydration in. Now, I'm going to take a little lip here, a little cotton bud, and I'm just going to feather those sidey bits. I think when you put on a bright colour and you look at yourself and you think, oh, I'm not sure, honestly, just try this tip. I'm just going to soften it right down so that the edges are just a little bit almost soft focus. And I'm going to see what you think of the finished result. Then, the tissue. Mm. Now for me, that's perfect. That, if you can go scroll back, see how it looked when I first put it on, it was a little bit garish for me. Um, and I wanted it just to kind of become part of my features a little bit more and not to be so hard. I'm going to take another cotton bud and I'm just going to go over that brightness. I still want the brightness there, but I don't want it to be as poppy so that it again softens with the lip. You see how that eye has stayed put really well. And I'm not gonna change, I'm not gonna change the um, reef on my cheeks either. But what I will do is add a little bit of Lisa Eldridge glow, elevated glow. Where is she? There she is. Um, this one is Crystal Nebula. Because the makeup is lovely and pretty, 
my top is quite soft my makeup lip color and cheek and eyes are sort of quite soft even though I've got that bit of metallic finish but just for a very you know modern twist let's just chuck a little bit of light here and here and again Lisa's products if you allow them to sit maybe just a little bit just to soften any fine lines I've got on my forehead as well um, when you put on Lisa's products or other products that I tell you about that I love um, is that again it it stays the sheen stays you can see that's obviously quite stripy but it's going to blend that very very lightly into that concealer on the top of that blush and that just gives a little bit of a modern finish and kind of brightens up yeah just brightens up the complexion lovely Woohoo! okay so that's the look <laughs> hope you like it i'm experimenting too i'm gonna have a cup of tea now i just finished my tea although i don't really like warm tea i like hot tea i don't mind warm coffee i can drink coffee any temperature um but warm tea and i always have it black for no reason at all um I thought I was a little bit parched. I've been using Jonathan Van Ness's products and I'm going to keep going for a couple more weeks before I tell you which ones I love and I can describe them more because they're fascinating. I've used the air dry cream on my hair and um, it's given it a really sort of lovely, you know, texture that I can move around with and kind of create shapes with, which is great, especially if you've got fine hair. I want to talk to you about a few shampoos that I've used. I might just do that at the end of the month, um, which has helped my hair. Because remember it all fell out when I used that K18? It all just got so brittle. I've been really trying to take care of it. And it's this bit here is, is growing. It's coming down now. It's nearly there. It's taken five, six months. Um, and the other product, the conditioning mist. Now, this is the one that I put in my hair last week's video. And I put in too much. But honestly, within an hour it goes. So I'm going to be really light with this and then show you how it looks, but they all smell beautiful. Three. I've had to count because <laughs> I used too much. One, two, three at the back. They all smell lovely and he's such a lovely man. I saw him being interviewed by um, on Stephen Bartlett's Diary of a CEO and I sort of really felt for him. I thought they were two very different types of chaps and um, yeah, I sort of felt for him a little bit in that interview. Anyway, again, I digress. But look, it's just given that sort of lovely definition and texture to my hair. It's just taken the dryness up. I quite like that dry, sort of salty texture. And they smell so amazing. Um, so if you've used these products and you like them, um, let me know. Anyway, guys. If you want me to do things particular for the end of July, do let me know. I hope you're happy with everything that I'm sharing with you. I love the messages that you send to me, either via Instagram or on YouTube, um, that you just had your cup of tea and you really enjoyed it and it was a great escape and I felt miserable and I watched you and I felt happy and all the lovely things that you say. I want to create like a little book um, um, of happy comments because I am very, very lucky to have you all. So thank you very much for joining me as usual. Bye for now.